Snow has always been a problem for railways and railroads around the world, be it freezing up switches, icing up water towers, or simply clogging up the line. Some of these problems are easier to fix than others, but they can still be a massive pain in the ass if not dealt with. So let's see how we tackle the old problem of snow simply being in the way of the tracks. In the UK, snow can be a problem on railway lines, but in the US and Canada, it can be a major issue. In the old days, the best solution was to simply bolt a bucket plow to the front of an engine and charge at the snow. The issue was that the old Civil War 440s weren't the most suited for the job. On top of the snow being heavy, the engine's wheels would often slip violently on the icy and wet rails. Because of this, multiple locomotives and much sand was needed to clear some lines. Between three to five engines would be coupled together and would charge through snow drifts. Other, more dense drifts would stop the train and so workmen would be needed to break up the snow to make it easier for the engines to plow through. In some cases, as many as 14 locomotives were coupled together to form one of these snow plow trains. In the UK, snow wasn't quite as deep as it was in North America, but some lines still required dedicated trains to keep them clear. These trains consisted of two locomotives set back to back with a plow on the front of each and a coach in the middle carrying workmen should they come across a harder drift. Snowplow designs eventually became more efficient at clearing snow from the tracks. Their designs eventually came to be made up of two wedge shapes, one to lift the snow up off the tracks and the other to force it to either side of the train as it passed by. Some plows were fitted to their own set of frames and had compartments for workmen to sit in. Most of these were also fitted with windows that allowed for the crew or bull to look ahead in case the snow was too deep or if there was an obstruction on the line. As is human nature, a a more efficient method of clearing deeper snow was devised in 1869 by a dentist in Toronto named J. W. Elliott, though he never had the chance to build a prototype of his machine. Orange Jewel from Orangeville, Ontario built a prototype later on and tested it in the winter of 1883 to 1884. This machine later came to be known as the rotary snowplow. The way it worked was simple. A wagon would be fitted with a large rotating blade at the front powered by a steam engine. A casing was mounted around the blade to channel the snow being cut by the blades. The snow would be blown to either the left or the right of the track and the direction could be changed by a person in the cab of the plow. Most rotary plows couldn't move on their own and required an engine to push them. They were significantly better at clearing deep snow drifts in mountainous areas compared to the traditional snow plows, but they were, and still are, very expensive to run, maintain and operate, which is why many railroads still use traditional plows to clear the lines. Most modern rotary plows are powered by diesel or electric motors, but some steam plows are still in service, mostly for display purposes for rail enthusiasts. Each railway has its own way of dealing with snow, some more extreme than others, but every railway at the end of the day shares the same philosophy when it comes to snow. It's a pain in the ass, but nothing a few men and a lot of horsepower can't fix. Subscribe for more.